Hey, today I was going to talk about storage because storage is something that I am newly excited about. And uh, I don't know if you are not currently running a small business out of your house, you may not be as excited about storage, but I definitely am because I know, God knows, just as a mom and then as a mom who has a business in their house, the one thing that we never have enough of is storage. And I'm not even somebody that has... I think probably is a direct result of having a business in my house. I don't do a ton of decorating as far as, um, you know, like, I mean, I do a Christmas stuff and we do some Halloween stuff outside, but I definitely do not. I am not one of those people that is like changing out my decor <laughs> seasonally. I don't have stuff from Hobby Lobby and Michaels and TJ Maxx and all that. So my house is uh, pretty, like I said, you can just see all my supplies I have sitting behind me for this video. My house stays pretty constant most of the time because honestly, a lot of it has become business space. So that's where we're at. So I have made some exciting uh, changes in that this year. So I wanted to give you a little tour. Okay, so this is one of my major, uh, my workroom upstairs that does have a TV in it um, that, you know, I use or the kids use. But I've got this table with my drum carter. And then I've got kind of all my, you know, a lot of blending stuff down in here. Got some sparkles and my little scale. <laughs> I've got my, uh, and this is just, you know, nothing special. This is a uh, old food scale. It says the biggest loser on it. And then this is a bowl made out of a record that is exactly the right size. And so that's what I'm using. And I use that to, uh, like if I'm doing bats, I will, I was just doing bats, so I'll show you some pictures. I will weigh out my fiber in advance and then it gets to go through my drum carter, which is the uh, baby, not the baby brother, the brother drum carter. Mom has the baby one. This is the uh, the regular size. And then I've got all these uh, baskets down here that like I said, I used to have a lot more in these baskets because they were kind of my primary storage. And you can see I've got this sort of thing over here. And I mean, it's not very glamorous. I got tons of bobbins, I've got my, uh, my selfie stick on a guitar stand I use to film videos, so that's super, uh, you know, high tech. And um, I have different blending fibers in here, all in bags. And if you really want to see something cute, right here I have, it's Lana. So she uh, wanted to be out where I was at, and I was just blending bats, so she is taking a nap down there under the table. But um, like I said, you can see everything is bagged up in plastics. And, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's as organized as it needs to be. And so this is definitely, this is kind of bat blending slash, uh, packaging station over here. And for my last video, I have all my little tags. So I've got my tags cut out and like I said, I was just packaging up stuff. So this is definitely, this surface gets used for many different things, but definitely a lot of packing. And like I said, as I back up. And I really like this room up here. But this is definitely, this is kind of a bonus room in our house that's upstairs. Um, and instead of being, it was definitely more of a kid's room when we moved here. Um, you know, the kids were little. And now, you know, now that they're big and they have all their room that they kind of hang out in more, this has uh, slowly become my square footage. And you'll recognize the rug from a lot of my videos um, for spinning. So I have my pink rug down here for, you know, spinning demo videos. And then this is where a lot of packing and blending happen, and, you know, tag cutting up and that sort of thing and puppy napping. And if you're new to uh, my channel, you may be wondering where I'm doing all the dyeing because you're seeing all of these colorful supplies everywhere for blending and braids and yarn. So you're probably expecting me to show you some sort of fabulous dye studio, but I'm here to tell you that at this point, I do not have a fabulous dye studio. So I am a big believer in getting people, especially if you're building a business here, I gotta prop my camera up 
if you're building a business, you kind of have to figure out like, what is it that you're good at? <laughs> and then really focus on that. I think that was one of the bigger mistakes I made starting out. So if I had advice for other people, and this could be for like any type of business, not just a fiber arts business. It's very easy to be like, well, I, I need to do everything, like anything that could be done, like I'm going to do all the things. And I definitely, you know, I mean, I'm clearly sitting here doing a lot of the, I'm probably doing more packing and shipping than I used to do. I used to hire out more of the packing and shipping. I had people that came here and helped me locally. Um, and now between me and the kids, you know, they cut out labels and tags, but I'm doing all the stuff that requires thought, but I may be doing some of the less glamorous stuff and I hire out, um, I have a great team that I work with that is of dye artist that, you know, it, it's my colorways. I, I get to, basically I get to do all the fun stuff. So I come up with the colors and the fibers and how I want it to be, whether I want it to be like color blocked or marbled or speckled or yarn, you know, like I get to do all of the fun artsy brainstorming part of it. But as far as the actual handling of the dyes with having clearly birds and, um, you know, puppies and children, at my point in my life right now, that is not something that on a large scale that I would need for work it is something I want to be handling in my house. So for, you know, safety reasons, I definitely outsource to people that I know are artists and pros and really know what they're doing there, which means I get to get exciting things in the mail. So let me show you. I've already cut this open because I'd started putting things up, but this is a new branch of braids. I'm over the moon about these. They are exactly what I wanted and they are I absolutely, I mean, sometimes we have surprises because, you know, dye and wool and yarn and, you know, sometimes the colors don't go exactly like you think they're going to. This one was exactly what I wanted. So I am thrilled with them. They have a real like retro beach arcade with like all the carnival lights, um, you know, like at night, like Ferris wheels and all of that. I just wanted something fun and summer. And like, so we just took the kids to the boardwalk down at Myrtle Beach. So, you know, I had that on my mind. So anyhow, this is one of my uh, mini bags of braids that I've already put up the rest. But these are Shanaco wool this month. I've been on a real Shanaco kick. And um, I think I, I have, a, I know I have a blog post on it. Shanaco wool is a type of kind of a cross between Merino and Rambouillet. They are raised in Oregon, and so it's USA wool, and they have super high standards for the fiber length as well as, um, what am I trying to say? Fiber length as well as, you know, ethical treatment of the sheep and shearing and all of that, and you can see it is just, I mean, it's beautiful. So I have definitely been on a Shanico wool kit because I bought a bunch of it, <laughs> and so we've been getting getting that dyed up, but it's just so lovely. So this is my braids. So basically I get to do the fun planning and I purchase everything and I get all the supplies and make sure they're exactly what I want it to be. And then these were dyed up by a talented fiber artist and then they come to me in the mail and it's always one of my favorite things. So I guess after my rambly tour here and I do have a uh, me and the puppy need to eat some lunch and I've got some shipments to get into the mail to get to the postman. But what I wanted to close with on today was while, I don't know, it might not be your cup of tea, I'm really happy with the, uh, you know, the space that I have set up in my home at the moment for my work. And it's definitely, if you have a home-based business, you are allowed to write off on your taxes. And I, of course, you know, disclaimer, I'm not a tax expert, so ask your own tax expert. But to my understanding, um, you know, so I, since I can't give official advice, you are allowed to write off a, a percentage of your bills, like your internet and your electricity, what, you know, things that you would need in your home if you have a home-based business. And you can write off a percentage that's based off of the square footage, so like just the physical square footage of those shelves, um, and then like my desk area and, you know, so, I mean, it can't be your whole house clearly, or just like, you know, oh, it's half the house. Like it, it has to be measured off and recorded and, you know, vary by the books and all of that. But I have definitely been able to expand my business as my kids have gotten bigger. That's been a big part of it, um, is when I had two little kids, 
you know, this big room I just showed you, this was the kids' room upstairs. I mean, it had a baby gate. It was full of toys. Um, you know, I mean, it had like a pack and play, had Disney going constantly. Um, so my business at that time was very much in, you know, in bags. It was vacuum locked up. It was sealed and in those containers and very much put away. Um, and it, so it was something that like I would bring out and film or create, and then it would go back up, and then it would come out, and then it would go back up. So that was a big part of my business being in a home, and that might be where you're at now, is where it's very, like, it's it's up, and then you just bring it out for when you need it. And at this point, like I said, about eight years in, I am so excited that I actually have, because, like, the kids are big enough that, you know, they've got their, they like being in their rooms, and honestly, they loaf around downstairs in, like, the actual living room, um, or they're outside. So I am very excited that I have actually been able to reclaim some of the space in the house to actually set it up for a much easier work situation for me where I can easily get things and blend things and use things and record things and, you know, go to my desk. And it's definitely a much better system for me. But this is like eight years in house number two in the making on that. It's definitely not where I started out with it and but it has been nice like I said I have every time we've increased things out I definitely make sure that I'm you know measuring and recording accurate square footage for my tax professional to help me with that so I guess I just wanted to say that wherever it is you're starting I always feel like that's misleading you <laughs> not misleading I know, and I could, I'll probably do a whole other video on this, on just kind of scale, where I'll see, like, on ads or something for other fiber arts business. And I know there's one I can particularly think of that was, like, these two people, and they were, like, employees, and they're walking around, like, this big warehouse. It was, like, this big warehouse they'd rented, and it had all these big things with all the yarn in it, and they were talking about, like, yarn subscriptions. And I just remember watching it and being like, wow... I don't have a giant warehouse. I have my house with my kids in it. And, um, you know, it can definitely make you feel like you're not really doing, you know, you're not big and serious. But I don't know. On the other hand of that, like, I don't have a big warehouse. I don't have to pay for a big warehouse. And, um, you know, when we went through, you know, COVID and small businesses all got their butts kicked I was really in a good position because I didn't have a big warehouse. I didn't have a brick and mortar. I didn't have a huge staff. I didn't have all of that. So my little like, you know, brass tacks business that I'd gotten really good at getting help when I needed help and paying people that were smarter and better than me for their services to run my business, but then also just like me doing a lot of it, that, that was really, I was in a firm place there. So I had to kind of appreciate that more. So I'm not saying one is better than the other or that one is where you start and is where you'll end up. But if you're just starting out with whatever it is you're doing and like you literally, I mean, I don't know, maybe you're doing accounting or Canva stuff or something. You just feel like, well, I'm one idiot sitting at my dining room table. Well, like most of us feel like we're one idiot sitting at our dining room table. So, you know, don't feel bad. And it might actually be something that, uh, you know, really works out for you in the future. So that's my video for today was on my different, you know, how my, my setup a little bit for bat blending and shipping that I showed yesterday, as well as just storage and then a little talk on scale. So hope you have a good one.